what's going on guys welcome back today we are doing a fun one here um, what is this one okay this is the oh the snort one okay sorry so what's going on we're gonna finish the snort challenge the basics and the reason I have snort one open is because I'm actually going to use that to take some of the rules right why would we not so let's go ahead and dive into it the first thing is if you haven't seen the snort video check the description go back and watch that snort video because it's on this box the regular snort one because otherwise you're going to be kind of completely lost and that's going to make it kind of really hard for you to follow along so we're going to go ahead and start this up once this starts we will um, open a full screen but you'll see this is kind of the format we're going to look at it and there is going to be a folder for each um, task we're going to go through the task and then we're going to go and knock it out now, I always leave, or I don't always, but I try to leave one thing not full so you guys can see that when it's completed, it does the confetti and all that crap. But um, I don't always do that, but I did on this one. So we're going to navigate to the task folder, given the, use the given PCAP file, and write a single rule to detect all TCP port 80 traffic. Now, if we go over here to snort, and we just, this is the first box, and we just go to the rule structure, right? We can just go grab any of these rules. Here's one of them, right? And then we can just change it and change it to do what we want. So that way you don't have to sit there and write the rule from scratch every time. You write a single rule to detect all TCP port 80 traffic packets in the given PCAP file. What is the number of detected packets, right? So pretty easy. We're just going to use this. Um, once this pops up, we're going to use this rule just manipulate it, edit it a little bit, and then we're going to answer these questions. Now, it's going to get a little bit more complex. So one thing I will say is this is a long box, so I'm not going to be able to dive as deep into detail. Um, I've been pretty sick, so I'm actually, um, my voice is just now coming back, which is why this video is late, um, not to make an excuse, but either way, that is the reality. So another thing, this gives me a chance while this is loading to let you guys know, check out the Patreon, check out the Discord. Um, I get a lot of comments on the Discord, um, I mean on the uh, YouTube about people wanting to see uh, more like interviews and stuff like that. If you want to be a part of those, you have to be in the Discord just so that way you can communicate with me and we can chat on there. And then the Patreon, they get a video, a different video every week that is um, completely separate from the YouTube. So let's go ahead and talk about these rules. So this is the rule format. If you guys did miss the first one, the rule format is what do we want to do here, which is alert in this case, but you can also make it um, stop the traffic, drop the packets, etc. What is the protocol or the port or the protocol, excuse me, it's ICMP. Well, since ours is going to be right here, TCP, we are going to change that to TCP. Any and any, because we want any source destination, and this is all port 80 traffic so we'll say any ip on port 80 any ip on port 80 right that's pretty much what we're looking for and then we're going to say we want icmp packet you can make that message whatever you want we're i'm just going to leave it generic i'm never i'm not going to change it in here if you guys want to change it you can the reference id we're not going to put a reference in there and then the SID, we have to change that to 1 million because that is what custom rules falls under. And then revision, will make it revision 1, right? So all we have to do, um, do, 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 do. Um, let's see, let's make sure, right, a single rule to detect all TCP port traffic. Okay, here we go. Now we're in. So here's our exercise files. Do, 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 do. We're on task 2. Here's our local rules. And let me go ahead and make this a full screen because otherwise this is going to be a nightmare for you guys to look at. Okay, so it says this is intentionally left blank. We go ahead and put this in here. Again, you can change this to whatever you want the message. I'm just going to leave it because I don't really care. We'll delete this. Let's say any. And then this needs to be TCP. And we want to read what it says closely. So it says write a single rule to detect all TCP port traffic 80 packets. Okay, so here we'll say port 80, or we'll say from anything to port 80, because we're just trying to see what is going to port 80, right? Again, I won't care about that. Um, we'll change this to 100, there we go, million one, revision one, that's fine, save it. All right, should be saved. 
now we can open up our um, you can open this up we can go now you don't have to do this but this is I just always go into the um, exercise files and I do this just simply for my own sake it's got nothing to do with uh, I don't care if the uh, files are saved in the right spot because this is obviously just going to be deleted when it's done but so now we're just going to say snort because that's what we want right and we want to say we want the full alerting and the the file they gave us here is they're saying in the pcap file well the pcap file is called mx3 pcap and we're going to whoops we're going to use the local rules so that's the file we're pointing to the configuration file rather than the actual um, configuration file now you can see alerts there's 164 things were alerted on our rule there's our answer right and all it was we said hey tell us everything that's gonna that's going to port 80 pretty easy um, especially if you use I'll tell you the best thing you can do is use this previous snort box as reference go back and forth so that way you don't have to sit here and try to make these rules from scratch so now investigate the log file what is the destination address of packet 63 well this is actually a lot easier than I think people will probably think it is and I'll show you why. So all we have to do um, is simply go through and go to packet 63, right? So what that means is just go to, we can do the exact same thing we did, but instead we can just say sudo snort, right? And we could say snort.log. Um, am I in the wrong one? Okay. So let me make sure the log file is in here. Okay, this is, are we on a different, uh, no, we're still on section two, so investigate the log file. Well, there is no log file, so that's the only thing that's worrying me. There's a PCAP and there's this. So let me see here. Um, I think we have to make a log file is what it's saying, so because we it doesn't have a log right now which is fine we just need to make a log okay guys welcome back sorry about that so what I didn't do what I messed up is I didn't actually log it so um, that's on me so what I missed was one piece of the syntax which I went back to the snort room and found but it was that I just wasn't putting the log in there so you can see I have to just put tack L to log it and then you just do a period because that's the directory you're currently in so if you do that and hit ls now we have the snort log so that was what I was missing um, and that's why there was no logging in there um, so if you guys didn't do the tech L that's what it was so now the question simply is a lot easier right what's the destination address of packet 63 well this is really easy because all you have to do is say hey we want to only show me 63 packets right so we're gonna say we want to read the snort log which is snort dot log right and then I would just want the number to be 63 so that the last packet is the packet that I'm looking for. And right here's the last packet. And you can see the, was it destination or source? Um, destination IP is 216-239-5999. There you go. Now, what is the ACK number of packet 64? Well, we're only on 63, so we'll just change this to 64. Go back up. And the ACK number is 0x2eb6b5384. Bingo. What's the sequence number of packet 62? Now, I don't have to go and type 62 in this. I can just go back. I can say this is 64, this is 63, this is 62. And the sequence number is 0x36c21e28. Bingo. Now, what is the time to live packet of 65? Well, we can just do the same thing and say we want 65 and look at the time to live. And time to live is 128, which you probably could have guessed. Now, what's the source IP of packet 65? And you're looking at it. It is 145-254-160237. So you can see this is starting to get pretty easy when they, at the beginning, what's the source port of packet 65? And if you look, source port 3327. Boom. All right. So that was all pretty easy. Now let's go to uh, what is task three. So I go in here, and you don't have to do this every time, but this is just easier for me to get um, basically 
get myself organized but I like to go in here and change to what task I'm in so that way I can and then go in here and say task three that way I'm in the right directories and I don't have to mess with it again so now what's it say all right a single rule to detect all TCP port 21 traffic well we already know if we go to local rules right we can paste that same rule oh we didn't I didn't know we even copy that we can go back here and we can grab our rule right and we can grab the same rule and it's just easier and we can actually edit it right so now again we're gonna be on TCP right so we're gonna say TCP get rid of this we can say any and we're gonna say here now it says create one rule but if you really want to catch all port 21 traffic you need two rules technically right so because you need any destination and then any source so we can leave this doesn't really matter we'll just say there you go now we'll copy this exact one put it here all right and we'll change this to any and then we'll go over here so now it shows us all traffic on port 21 versus if we didn't, it would just show us, um, I mean, just change this to two. It doesn't really matter. Um, if you didn't do both, you would only see things that are trying to go to the de or to the um, destination. You wouldn't see the source. This is the source. This is the destination. So you would have to pick one or the other. So we went ahead and did that. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and say, hey, let's run our normal stuff. Pseudo snort right and then we're gonna use the local dot rules and then we're gonna say we want to log it in this directory and we're gonna say we want the full mode we don't want the console just the console logging or anything full alerting and then we're gonna use our FTP PCAP you can see it's running the question it asked is what is the number of detected packets Well, let's see. The alert is 614, right? Which is fine, but see how it's 307? That's because we got both the destination and the source. So keep that in mind that if you just write the one rule, you'll get half the packets, right? because you're getting the source and destination. So that's why it's 614, cut that in half, it's 307. If you want to cut that out, you can just create one rule, which is what they tell you. But in a real situation, you would not just want one source unless you're just monitoring one source. Um, meaning like you specifically have an FTP server, you only want to connect on um, 21, you would check just the destination there. but you also want to pay attention to what you're coming out of, if that makes sense, what your um, source is. So you can get rid of this. Um, doesn't really matter, but you could, if you want to see the actual results to match exactly what they're looking for and you don't want to have to deal with it, just do this. Just do destination. Save it run the same thing now before we do that let's make sure we know which one's the log uh, 20 is the log we're... so now you run the same thing and now you see 307 because we cut out the other the both sides of traffic and then you can see this is our new log so however you want to do it that's how you do it so you can either do it that way or you can do the one rule which is what they tell you to do but it just um, just showing you both ways so now what's the next one what is the FTP server name okay oh service name excuse me so this one is actually interesting because if we go through um, if we go through and actually look at them right we have to actually look at the file or at the packets themselves we're gonna look at the log and the log is we'll use that second one the snort.log right 
So we'll say sudo snort read snort dot log. We want one two seven. That's our second one. And then we're just going to look at the top 10. It doesn't really matter which ones you look at. I just want to look at some of them. And we're just looking for the actual service itself. You can see we don't see anything here. Oh, right there, Microsoft FTP service. Now the reason I only did 10 is because I didn't want to search through all these. But the reason you might say, well, how did you know that was going to be in there? I didn't necessarily know it was going to be in the top 10. But I knew it was going to be in here because we're only showing that port 21. So we know FTP is going to be in here. At some point, they're going to have to talk about the service. So there's Microsoft FTP service. Okay. Deactivate comment on the old rules. Write a rule to detect failed FTP logins. Okay. So they, they're saying comment out the old ones, which is fine. We can just go to local rules. We can put a comment here. Comment that bad boy out. You could do what I'm going to probably do also, which is just edit this, right? Um, that's not very difficult. You don't have to comment or delete it. You can just edit this one. So now we'll just get rid of this and we'll just say, leave that there. You can say message, failed logins. Again, you can change this message to whatever you want. Now, the only thing you have to do here is add content, right? That's what it's called. So content. And what this content is, is we want 530 and user now you may say why do you want 530 user that's because that is the actual um, code for FTP to fail so for a failed user login so if you just look up um, the FTP codes you'll see that F530 is the failed one so I could show you how to Google but I think you guys can figure that out so now we'll save this right now we go down here and we just say sudo snort and again we're gonna do the same thing local rules and I didn't delete or comment out the old one I just edited it you can do that too um, if this was a real snort box I would comment them out but because this box is going away when I'm done I don't really care um, and we need to log that into the local and we'll say FTP PCAP now keep in mind the difference in name there's 41 alerts there's 41 alerts. So there's 41 failed attempts. Now it says write a rule to detect successful FTP logins. So we're going to do the exact same thing, except for we can actually edit this. I'm going to leave the message. I don't really care about the message, but all we have to do is change the actual um, code here for the content and make that 230. Now, for those of you wondering what does content mean, it means it's going to look in the packets and tell us when it finds this content in there. Right, the content it's looking for in this case is this 230 code. So now when we run it, run the same thing, and you'll see we now have one alert versus the 41. Boom, so we had one successful and 41 failed. Now, if I were looking at this from a thousand yard view, I would say that's probably a brute force attack or a dictionary attack where someone's trying to log in 42 time or 41 times, then boom, they got one in right right rule detect FTP logins attempted attempts with a valid username but no password entered so this one excuse me so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep using the same alert you can do this if you want it doesn't really matter what you do um, so what we need to do now is we don't I don't really care too much about the, the failed logins um, name here or the message here you can do that if you want but what we're gonna do is we're gonna say we want the three three one and changes to password now again you guys are asking how I know this um, I'd have to look it up too. I don't know the um, FTP codes offhand I know a lot of the HTTP codes but I don't know the FTP codes offhand just google it you'll see it um, you can just type in FTP successful login failed login um, no password so there's the three three one password save run it again Keep in mind, every time I'm doing this, it's actually logging as well. So there's 42 alerts. There's 42 alerts. Boom. Okay, so now was the write a rule to detect FTP logins with the administrator username but no password? Well, this isn't too hard because we already have one piece of that, right? Content, password. So now all we have to do is just add the additional admin, right? So all we have to do is say, hey, we also want content. And we want it to be 
administrator. Right? So we just need to add that double content. So now we want administrator in there as well. Same exact error or same exact thing, but we have seven now. There's seven. Boom. So all we did was change it so that instead of the um, just no log or no passwords, it's administrator and no passwords, right? Okay, so what happened there? Okay, so now navigate to the new task folder. So let's go CD and let's go to CD task four. Go in here, get rid of this, go in here, task four. All right, I'm assuming we're gonna have to edit the local rules, so I'm just gonna open that now. This one already has one in here for us, which is really nice. All right. Use the given PCAP file, write a rule to detect the PNG file in the given PCAP. Well, that's actually not too bad since we've already kind of done this, right? So what we can do is we can actually go through and we can say, do, 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 do. Oh, okay. That was weird. Okay. So we, they just gave us a generic rule in here. They didn't give us anything crazy. We want any, any, right? We want, I see, or we want this to be TCP. They gave us the generic ICMP, right? But we, we can leave that there. I don't really care about this. We can leave this. Now, the only reason I add that is because custom rules require it has to be over a million. So that's why I add the, uh, the content, right? So now the content we're going to add, and I'm going to copy this, is simply, you may not understand it, but this is the bytes that show when a PNG, at the beginning of a PNG file. Okay, so we're looking for the con this specific string of characters in a PNG file. You can look this up, super easy. Um, there's there's this type of um, hex in every single type of file. There is identifiers, okay? And that's what they're doing here. So what we're gonna do now, save that. And we'll say, hey, let's run this again. Pseudo snort local rules, full. Now we just need this instead of FTP. Is this in the same? I didn't even look at what uh, new tab. Oh, it is the FTP one. It's the same one. Okay. So we'll say FTP. Okay. Error local rules, bad data, uh, possible missing semicolon. So I'm, I'm missing a semicolon right here. Perfect. Thank you for telling me. So now we run it again. Okay. There's one alert. Right, so we can go up. We should be able to read the um, the actual file now, the because we logged it. I'm typing; it's not doing anything. There we go. So we should be able to read it. You can see the snort log there. So we say sudo snort read. We know there's only one thing in there, so don't have to worry to look too far. And what exactly are we looking for for it? Identify the software name embedded in the packet. Well, if we go down, let's see if we can find it. Hmm. Well, we don't have everything here, so let's do this and do TAC X to show us the, the full original packet. There we go, there's the full packet. All right, and we're looking for the embedded software name. Nope, oh, there you go, Adobe Image Ready Q. Adobe image ready right there. Easy enough. Now, writer will detect the GIF file in the given PCAP. So this is just the GIF. So very similar to what we just did. The only difference is we're going to change this rule, right? So first thing we're gonna do, you just gotta go and look at file signatures. This is the same thing that I'm, I told you guys. I don't have these memorized. I just looked them up. Very easy to look them up. Um, there's two different types of GIFs signatures there's gif um 87 and gif 89 we could do both um but i'll just save you guys the time it's gif 89 so we'll say gif and we'll say 89a and a lot of times people ask me like there's no way you would just know that correct i don't just know that i would never just know um that the gif 89a is the signature i would just go look up file signatures and then do it that way right so now 
And some people probably do have it memorized if they use it all the time. I don't. So now we're still in task four, right? Okay, we're still in task four. I just want to make sure. So we said LS two, 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 two. So now we just need to make sure here. I want to make sure that we're doing the right one. Is this on the PCAP file we're supposed to do this on? Um, write a rule in the given PCAP. Okay, just making sure. So now we're going to say sudo. We'll do the whole thing again. There we go. PCAP, but we changed the rule. Should be good. Now the different, there was four alerts on that one. Snort.log. Okay. And it's asking us, investigate logs and identify the image format. Well, there's the GIF format because we got alerted on it right there. So, like I said, there's only two. So you could have guessed it was either A or it was 87A or 89A. So you could have guessed that. But we got hit. We got four hits on 89A. So we know that that's the signature. Okay. Let's go to task five. And if this is confusing to you guys, just look up signatures, um, file signatures. They're, they're pretty easy, actually, once you actually see them. Um, most of them have some sort of signature that is going to be tell the computer that that is the type of file it's messing with, not just the .ext extension, whatever. Okay, so let's go ahead and cd, cd task 5. All right, now we're in the, a torrent. This is the wrong one. Okay. Torrent metafile, here we go. So the local rules, I'm assuming we're gonna have to edit that right away. Using the given PCAP file, write a rule to detect the torrent metafile in the given PCAP. What is the number of detected packets? Okay, so right here, let's I don't know why sometimes they give you the rule and then sometimes they make you get a rule. So I'll copy this one again, just so we, I don't want to type the whole thing by scratch. Okay, we'll get rid of this and say any. All right, and then you could change whatever message you want, right? So all we're looking for is a torrent file. So this one's really easy. We just say content, we want torrent, right? Seems pretty self-explanatory. Now, you could do it. There's other ways to do it, but this is a very easy way to do it, right? Just might as well just do the torrent. Now we just say sudo snort read the snort log, which we don't have yet. That's the next step. Sudo snort local rules, right? And then we say a full because we don't want it just on the console. We're going to log it to the local directory and then the torrent pcap. And we'll see we got no alerts. So what is the number of detected packets? Right now we got none. So what did we do wrong? Let's check. Well, we didn't change this to TCP. That's for starters, right? Now let's run it again. There we go. Now we got two. So now we have two, which, whoops, I meant to do this. There you go. What's the number of detected packets? Two. What is the name of the torrent? Investigate the log and alarm files. What is the name of the torrent application? Well, now we already have the log file, right? So we can say sudo snort, and we can say read, and we can say the snort log, right? And we want the full packet. There's only two of them, so we know we don't have to get crazy with it. And we go up here, and we're they're asking us, what is the name of the torrent application? Oh, we can go through here. Application, BitTorrent, right there. So that was easy. BitTorrent. Investigate the log alarm files. What is the multi-purpose internet mail extension type of the torrent meta file? <laughs> okay. So this one, it's not as hard as you think. We already have it. It's right there. Application X BitTorrent. I think some people might just get confused by the wording, but it's it's already there for us. We already found it, right? So those are kind of two two for one there. Um that is the type of torrent meta file. Now, what is the host name of the, of the torrent meta file? Well, let's look if we can find the host name right there. Tracker2torrentbox.com. So right there, just one 
one thing we had to do and we got all those answers so now we, we can actually go to the next one six all right now we're in task six let me go to here go back and i do that every time in the beginning because it's just easier for me not to get mixed up if you guys are wondering why so okay troubleshooting rules syntax errors so um so it's telling us we can do this with the console before to test it so we don't have to um so we don't have to actually log it every time which is fine so now we're, what we're gonna do is go in here and apparently we have to edit each rule to do something so find fix the syntax errors in local rule one rule and make it work smoothly okay so there's a syntax error in here alert tcp any they're going from this way or this place to this place um one thing you can do by the way I, I think i see it but one thing i'll just show you you can do is you can go here because they just showed us how to do this we can paste this and what we could do is run local one and it will tell you look local one rule part parse error any message it kind of shows you where it's at right you see it says it shows the any it's pointing to it. I don't know if you guys can see that, but right there, it's pointing to it. So if you run it, you can kind of get a little um, feel for it. And you can see there's no space there. So let's try and save that with a space, right? And then we run it again. And it ran just fine with 16 alerts. So it needs a space. Simple as that, right? So now let's go to local two. Alert, ICMP, any, any, any message, troubleshooting, blah, 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 blah. All right, so now what do, you, what do we think is on this one? Well, we have to look at it, right? Well, one, I can tell you right here, there's no additional ports. They have a, they have a source IP, but they don't have any ports. So what is the rule supposed to be doing? Um, I, I'm assuming it's any, any. I don't really know, but you have to have some, you have to have ports, right? So we save that, we run it, we change this to two. All right, we got 68 alerts, 68 alerts, boom. So they just didn't have the right amount of ports. So we can close that, open up three. Okay, now they have two rules in here. What's it say? Um, fix it and make it work smoothly for number three. Okay, so this one says alert ICMP, any, 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 which is correct. Um, okay now message okay any and then they have port 80 and then they have port 443 so you can see um, that there's obviously something wrong with that right look at the SID well this we know is a custom rule for one for two it's the exact same SID as this you can't have the same ID so we could change it to just two or we could add to make it a custom rule doesn't really matter, but you have to change the SID because you can't have two rules running with the same SID. So now we'll say three. All right, we got 87 alerts. Boom. All right, now we gotta make this next one run smoothly. Okay, again, we're back to, is this the same one? Okay, it's not the same one. Okay. Any, any, well, for one, the SID is the same again. I guess I'm confused. It looks like the same thing. Um, interesting. They did change some things. The SID looks like it needs to be changed for one. So we'll change that. And then there's a semicolon that needs to be here instead of that okay so let's try that it was just throwing me off that it was the same one there we go we got 90 so you need to put that semicolon in there I don't know if the SID being the same would matter but it did seem like it would matter to me so um, fix the syntax error in local 5 so now we're on 5 
right and we're five alert icp any any this file intentionally does not come in okay yeah, yeah so now we're going to question five right so any any so this one i can tell you right here that's not possible so that's one thing i would say change this to this that's not possible you can't have traffic with no source so that's that's one thing um let's look at the another one that you can see here is there's no semicolon looks like the sids are right let's give that a shot see what happens five um oh we messed up right here There's 155. There's 155. Perfect. Okay, so now we've got this local six rule. And what we have to do is look and find how many more of these are there. So, right here, local six. Make it work smoothly to create alerts. Okay, so all we have to do is find why this one doesn't work, right? So we know the message doesn't really matter, right? Or shouldn't matter. Um, we know it's TCP, any, any, both directions, port 80. And then the content you can see, they have that 67, 65, 74. All right, let's run it and see what we, what it runs into. It should tell us what the issue is, right? Oh, didn't tell us. It just says zero alerts. So let's let's look. Okay, so you can see. Let's see here. So you can see get request found. Well, one thing I'll say is I believe these are case sensitive I believe that so so this hex here we're gonna want to add um, right here we want to add I believe it's no I gotta remember if it's in front or behind but you want to add no case so because we want it to not be case sensitive so let's see so we'll just add i got i can't remember where it's at so we'll add no case i can't remember if it's like that if that's not right we'll go back whoops We'll go back and look at the um, uh, please place content rules before no case. There it is. Okay. So we want cut, paste, there we go. We got two. So it was after. I, I was confused on the before or after. So there you go. And that is because it's case sensitive and this may not be the exact case that it was coming in because this is considered lowercase. So, uh, whoops, there we go. Okay. So lastly, we go to rule seven, which I think is the last rule in this. Oh, there was a P cap in there too, but okay. Now this one, um, pretty simple. There's no message. It just says content right there's there's no actual message of any kind so we just have to change that to say message right and we can make it say literally anything so we'll just say alert alert I mean you don't have to even put anything in there there you go now you run it again this time change it to seven and you get nine alerts but it says what is the name of the required option and it's message so pretty easy that one was at least okay 
So now, go back. Okay, and then do, do, do go back here. Task seven, and we got our local rules and local one rules. So first thing it's saying is use the given PCAP file, use the given rules. What is the number of detected packets? Okay, so what is the number of detected packets? Well, let's just take a look real quick. So we just say snort, use the local rule, right? Local.rules, and then we say we're going to read the MS17 rule, or the MS17 PCAP, right? And we're going to log it to. So we're just using their rules right now, their rule set. And 25,154 is the amount of detected packets. Now, we're going to use local one rules empty file to write a new rule to detect payloads containing the IPC keyword, which if you don't know is a default um, share that is on Windows. So we're going to use this one, which is blank, right? And we're just going to, let's see if I, we still have a rule here. Ah, I thought we had a rule there. Um, okay. So let's go ahead. <laughs> let's, let's look this one's a little bit more complex so let's look the content option will help you filter the payload okay thanks for giving us the heads up on that um, okay so now all we're gonna do is go over here grab this rule again because I am lazy and I like to have rules there so change this to TCP again change this to any again all right I don't care about the message so much change this but we want the content, right? And the content we want is exactly what they said already. So the content will just be IPC dollar sign. And then that should be good, right? And then we'll say, go ahead and run it. But this time use the local rules one. Was it local rules one or local one rules? Local TAC one. What the hell? There we go. Local TAC one rules. All right, and it says bad escape sequence. Okay, I got an error on that, so that means that didn't work. So what are we gonna do? Well, let's try and convert this, right? Instead of this, let's try and use that hexadecimal that we're used to seeing. So we'll say cut that right because that's where the contents gonna go and we'll just open cyber chef cyber chef paste and we'll just say to hex 5c49 we'll try this right save that go ahead and whoops there we go Try and run that, see what happens there. Well, we got zero alerts though, which is not correct, right? So let's see, what did we do now? Well, one thing we did forget to do, which may make a difference here, is we forgot to put these in there. Let's try this bad boy out again, see if we get anything else. There we go, we got our 12 packets, just gotta put it in the right format obviously stuffy so you can see you just had to convert it to hex and that's just because it had that escape character in it is what they call it and it sanitizes for that so it makes total sense so now it's saying 12 right investigate the log and alarm files what is the request about well there's only 12 files so or 12 um, packets so we should be able to just look through them right there's not that many so pseudo snort read snort.log now the question is, that's the other question is, how many logs do I have? Oh, I didn't log it. Crap. Okay, so that's fine. We'll log it real quick. Um, so we'll say, before we say full, we want to attack L. We want to log it real quick. All right, now we can say sudo snort, and we can say read the snort log file, and we want the full packets. 
go through. And what are we looking for? There's the I oh there's the full path right there. 192, 168, 116, 138 IPC. There's the full path right there. All right, so what is the CVSS V2 score of the M? That's just a Google search. If you Google search this CVS score, it will tell you it's 9.3. There you go. Super easy. There's no need to even look that up. Um, okay, so now we're on. Let's use external rules to fight against the latest threats. Okay, so we're on external rules to fight against the threats. All right, there's task eight. Go back here, close this. Task eight, log 4j. All right. Okay, you can see there's, I don't know why I opened it because they this is predefined rules. So these are rules that people, that's why they're called external rules. Someone else made them and they've given them to you. Okay, so what's it say? What's the number of detected packages? So use the given rules. So we're just gonna use the regular rules here and I'm not gonna there we go um, and we're just gonna tell them local dot rules okay and then we're gonna say we want whoops we want to log it and then we want the log 4j pcap all right and there is 26, 26 detected packets. How many rules were triggered? Well, if you look, four events, right? So four rules were actually triggered. Another four, that's just the... There you go, okay, filtered events, there's only four. So there you go. Um, so yeah, there's only four events, which means only four of the rules. So there you go. What are the first six digit digits of the triggered rule SIDS? Of the triggered rule SIDS, excuse me. Okay, so all we gotta do here is if you know, Snort nicely does this for us. See how there's an alert file? Well, we can go ahead and look for the, you can see, they start at 210. So we can just go ahead and say, let's look at the alert file, right? Grep for 210. Now you don't necessarily have to do that because they're right here, because it says, what are the first six digits of the triggered rule? 210037. Well, I can see that's right here. I don't have to do this, but if you were to look for it, that's how you do it. And then there they are. But we didn't have to do that. It's right there. Okay. This is a... Okay, so now we're looking for different size packets. So now we're going to go here, and we got to edit the local rules one. And we're going to see if we have copy, paste. I don't know why the copy and paste in these are so messed up. It, like, it cuts mine out all the time. Okay, so we're... So first things first, we're only looking for traffic going to, right? Because we're looking for payloads. So traffic going to, um, I don't really care about the message itself. I know I should, but okay. So now we're going to say the size of the packet or the destination packet, right? Is 770 through, right? 855. Super simple. Make sure you get a semicolon there, not the, um, or a, uh, whatever the hell the difference is. Make sure you have the right one there. Um, make sure you change this. That's probably too high, but that's all right. Now we should, keyword should, be able to run this. Local one rules. Read the log 4j pcap. Log it. And we'll name it tech 8. Okay, 41 alerts hit on that. Pretty easy, right? I know this seems like it's I'm flying through it and it's not that complex. It's really not if you break it down, right? If you can just figure out what's the right syntax, the rules are easy. You know what you're trying to do. 
you could make it happen. Um, okay, investigate the log and large. What's the name of the base of the used encoding algorithm? I'll be honest with you. I didn't even do this one. I just typed in base64 because it's what TriHackMe loves to use, and it makes sense because it's used a lot. So I just said, there you go. So you guys can do that if you want, but that's how I did it. Um, okay, investigate the log alarm files. What is the IP ID of the corresponding packets? Well, let's take a look. So we say sudo, first off, let me see what log files I have. So I have two of them. I don't know which one's which, so we may have to do this twice, right? And we're gonna say snort log, um, I guess we'll just try 168 first, and then we'll say X, and we're looking for um, the IP ID of the corresponding packet. Um, and the question comes to what, let's just back it up here. So that way we get the full thing. So let's do, cause I want to know which log file I, I used, but I don't know which one I did. So user agent, okay. I just don't remember which user agent I did, if I'm being honest, or I'm not which user agent I did. Um, which one is the correct log file for Actually, we can find that out pretty quick. Let's do this. It'll tell us how many. So 26, is that what we answered last? 26? Um, nope, 41. So we have the wrong one. So we'll say do the same thing, but instead of this log packet, we'll say the other one, which is... So 350 is the, this one. So we'll just say... Three five zero, and hopefully if we did it right, yep, there's 41, so that's the right one. Now we know we're in the right one. Okay, so now it's saying, um, what is the name of the encoded algorithm, blah, blah, blah. What is the IP ID of the corresponding packet? So we have to find the IP ID, right? Um, so let's find the... Now there's 41 in here, so that's the unfortunate thing. Uh, get LDAP, okay, basic command, base64, so there's the command, right? So there's the command itself. So that's easy because it literally says base64. So we didn't even have to actually find that. Um, now we've got to find the IP ID. So there's the base64 command that we could actually copy if we wanted. Um, but then we need to find the IP ID, which is, scroll up, 62808. 62808. So you just have to find the correct packet that is base64 encoded. That's the corresponding packet. Um, now decode the command. Well, luckily for us, I just grabbed it. And somehow that's what it grabbed. I don't really know how that's what it grabbed, but. Um, Yeah, we can get, we should be able to get rid of, we'll have to do it one line by line, which is fine. Now, is there an easy way to do, easier way to do this? Yes, 100%, but this is, if I was doing this just really quick, like I am now, I, this is how I'd do it, because it's easy enough. If I was doing it, like, like I actually needed to do this in a large scale, this is not how I'd do it. All right, curl, da, 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 da. all right, so pretty well, um, easy enough. So we'll say, now here's the fun part is I can copy most of it, right? Okay, so we can copy most of it. 
let's just get this part for now. Copy. Oops. Here's the answer. Paste. Okay, so it's W get, and then tag Q. Tag zero. Okay. Uh, there we go. Okay, tag two, Q, tag zero, and then it's going to go into this other crap. Which we can actually fix if we wanted to, but what we'll do is we'll just do this. <laughs> we'll let that go. Wow, the magic actually sucks today. Wait, why is it just doing that part? I want the whole thing. Okay, they're terrible at it. So, you just need to decode it, but of course it's not going to work for me right now for some reason. Um, but once you decode it, you just get the IP. That's the only thing we're missing here. It's 45.155, and I'm typing the wrong thing. 45.155.205.233, and then the port, which is 5874. And when you look at it, maybe if I can get it there, right? Um, this is just an encoded command that's Basically, if you just get it in the right format, it'll encode or decode properly. I just don't want to sit here and waste the time because it's pretty easy for you guys to do. So 162.0.228.253. Port 80. Okay, easy enough. And then we'll say, then they feed that to bash. Submit. There you go. Easy enough. Now, if you're confused on that, if I were to actually just pull this out properly and then base64 decode it properly, I'd probably delete a character or something, um, then it would work. I'm just not going to do that because you don't need me to do that for you guys to see. Okay, how do I, thank you, um, what we're doing here. Okay, so once that happens, you get the rest of it. Now, the last question it asks is, what is the CVS score for log4j vulnerability? Um, again, 9.3, you can look it up. That's, that's a Google search. Um, and then in conclusion, they had us run a lot of basic snort challenges. Um, it was, I will say at times it was not as uh, clear cut as it should have been in my opinion. Like they should say like, here's what we're trying to do versus like, for instance, use the corresponding packet, like just say for the packet that, um, had the base 64 encoded, it'd be a little bit easier because it gets all tangled up when we're doing it all. But anyway, let me know what you guys think. Hopefully this helps you guys. Thanks, guys.